Hey, this is Writer's Row. I'm DC Wright Hammer, and I have a very special guest for this episode. Uh, we're going to be talking about writing a sequel to a book after uh, a few years have passed. Maybe you've published other books and you're going back to some of your early books to write sequels. I have a very special guest for this episode, Don Hosmer. I'll let her introduce herself and tell us about the most recent release that she's had. Hi everyone, I'm Dawn Hosmer and I'm an author of primarily psychological thrillers and suspense. And as DC mentioned, I'm getting ready to release my fifth book on September 21st of this year. And it is a sequel to Bits and Pieces, um, which came out in 2018. And yes, twins. And then Pieces and Parts will come out on September 21st of this year. So, awesome. yes. And there will be a link in the description to the first book. There will be a link to the second book to pre-order this week. And if you watch this in the future, you'll be able to just buy it outright. You know, wanted to have you on the show for a lot of reasons, Don. Number one, we're friends, so that's helpful. Um, and I read bits and pieces and I just, you know, I thought it was great. Um, you know, there's twists and turns, the psychological thriller aspect, just keeping you on the edge of your seat. So take us back to 2018, which feels like a decade ago at this point. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, talk us through writing this book. And at any point in your mind, did you consider, did you have a sequel in mind going into that? I did not. I am not a fan of reading series or okay. duologies or trilogies. I'm I am a standalone novel type of reader. So okay. that is what I always envision myself writing. And I knew when I wrote bits and pieces that a little bit of um, things, a, a few things that happened there at the end could potentially set me up to write a sequel. Mm -hmm. But as you know, having just read bits and pieces, it is a very intense book. And right. When I finished, my comment was, no, if I write a sequel, it's going to be Tessa dies the end because <laughs> I, I'm like, I can't, I cannot right. do it. I can't go back to her world. Um, but then bits and pieces out of my five or four books is the most often read and it is the most discussed and talked about. And so I heard from readers over and over again, will you please write a sequel? Will you please write a sequel? We need to know. And so I relented and okay. wrote a sequel. So what did it, what, you know, you've, you've published what, three books since then before you got to this one, um, to the latest one? So I, I have four total out now. Yep. And the sequel is the fifth, yes. So take us through going back to that world, a world you said you would never go back to um, how did you take yourself back there? I mean, above and beyond, maybe you, you know, reread your book or something like that, but what did it take to really put yourself back there? Surprisingly, not much. Um, at first when I thought, well, I'm going to write a sequel, I thought I should go back and reread bits and pieces. And I started to, and I'm like, I can't do this. I've <laughs> already read this a million yep. times. I cannot read it again. And so really I had such a strong grip on who the characters in that first book were that yep. I didn't really need to go back at all. I had to look up a few details to make sure I got those right. But literally I would just search the document for exactly what I needed so that I didn't have to read any more than I needed to. Um, but it was interesting because you, I'm a pantser, okay, so I, I sit down with an idea and I just write. And at some point, usually in that first third of the book, the characters take over. That did not happen in the sequel. Okay. And I don't know if that's because of 2020 and the mess of the pandemic and, sure. and all of that or because I was resistant somehow to writing a sequel. But the characters did not take over until the last quarter of this book. And at that point, it was like, oh, this is sweet relief. Like, oh, this is why I like writing. Yep. Yeah. Um, so when you, you started writing, it seemed like it was a chore to begin with. Um, 
you know, did you have to reconcile in like the editing process? Like, did you have to like, you know, when you're working with, I'm, I'm assuming you worked with an editor on this, like, did they, did you have to go back and forth and, and do much of that? Or was it pretty straightforward? It was pretty straightforward for me. I'm a very, um, I write very clean first drafts, thankfully, um, mm -hmm. because even writing clean first drafts, it's grueling to edit. So I can't imagine if it wasn't a clean first draft. Um, but the person I worked with to edit it read bits and pieces right before I sent her the sequel oh. so that it would all be fresh in her mind. Yep. And there really wasn't a lot, anything that I had to fix to line up to mm -hmm. make it work as a sequel, which I'm thankful for. So you write bits and pieces, you write some other books, so you're kind of taking yourself to other worlds, other characters mm -hmm. with different rules and things like that. Do you have any tips for writers who may want to go back and write sequels later, how they can sort of keep some of that original, you know, from their older books in mind if they're going to go back and write sequels? Like how they can kind of put the first book on hold and then go back as a... So, you know, so if they're writing, you know, multiple books in between, you know, what are some tips that you might have learned to, you know, put yourself back in there? Things that were helpful for you that maybe other writers, if they write their first book, write three other books like you did and then come back. Any tips for them? Yes, yeah, so a couple of things that were helpful um, in this process for me is I keep a separate notebook for each book I write. And in that notebook, I just jot down, you know, basics like how old's Tessa, when's her birthday, you know, just little facts yeah. like that. So I did rely heavily on that notebook um, to refer back to when I was writing to make sure my timelines um, made sense. Sure. And the other thing that was super helpful to me, and I know people always say reviews are for readers, not for writers, but right. In this case, reading reviews for bits and pieces was very helpful to me because I looked at both the good, the bad, the in-between reviews to say, okay, what did people like about bits and pieces? What do I need to make sure to incorporate in this sequel? What do I need to leave out? Sure. Um, so those were very helpful to me. Um, those would be my two biggies. If, <laughs> if you are someone who doesn't remember clearly your first book, I would suggest going back and reading it again. For me, I I just could not. <laughs> yeah. And um what do you think what do you think some um some things you did differently in the sequel, some lessons learned over the last however many years in between. Um, you know, how how is how is writing this book? What are some tools, different things that you've learned along the way that you put into the sequel? I think I'm a much better writer um, mm -hmm. now than I was when I wrote Bits and Pieces. I think that back then I spent a lot of time with internal dialogue um, with Tessa. And there were some reasons for that that made sense with the book. But in this book, it was a lot more action, a lot more conversation. I think it's just a better written book. Okay. I hope that readers agree. I, um, yep. But that no, was hard, hard because ahead. Bits and Pieces was so well received. I think that had Bits and Pieces not been so well received, the pressure wouldn't have been the same. But because <laughs> people did like Bits and Pieces so much, it was that chance for imposter syndrome to really kick in sure. and say, you're never going to be able to write another book that people love this much. Um, so I had to keep battling that. Okay. Fear. Yeah, I, uh, I did sort of, not the opposite, but I, I wrote my first book and then I immediately wrote my second book. And um, it, there's, you know, I haven't written, I haven't published the book since. So that tells you uh, that I kind of got a little burnt out there. Um, but I, I agree with you, even in the span of about 12 months from my first book to my second book, the writing just improved so much, working with editors, getting feedback, um, and you just know the characters and the story better, um, you know, and now I do have, you know, my third book in the series. I actually have two, two more books that are probably going to come out in the series and I've started them. I just, 
like you said, I can't be in that. I couldn't put myself back in that world, and I knew it was time to take a break. And it's gone on close to three years now. Um, I will get back. I will finish it. It's something, a goal that I've, I've promised myself. But absolutely understand what, you, what you're going through here and now. So it's really cool to see you get back to it. Um, really excited um, for uh, Pieces and Parts, the new one that's coming out next week. And um, yeah, so where, where, where's the place you want people to get it from uh, if they're interested? Um, they can go to Amazon or to my website, donhosmer.com, and reach out to me if you'd like a signed paperback and some author swag. I have that available. Um, but it, I did upload through Ingram, so it should be available wherever books are sold. Awesome. Really appreciate you coming on to tell this part of your story, Dawn. Um, and I'm sure you'll be back really soon to talk about some other things. So thank you so much. Thank you, DC. Bye. Take care.